All right. Hello and welcome to the November edition of My Tech U, where today we're going to be talking about four quadrants of strategic IT planning. Um, we are joined by uh, my co-founder and colleague, Leif Wildenberg, who's the CEO of My Tech, uh, and I'll be uh, kind of facilitating and asking questions and con uh, contributing today. Um, uh, a couple housekeeping notes before we have Leif introduce himself and before we kind of frame up the problem that we're trying to solve but with this session. Uh, so with there are the, the GoToMeeting questions panel, all the audience is on mute, but if you have questions, please uh, insert them there and, and Stephanie and I and we'll do our best to uh, insert them uh, into the, 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 the webinar or we'll ask, uh, answer them afterwards. Uh, and the session is being recorded. So uh, you'll all receive a link afterwards and can reference it at a later date as well. So with that said, Leif, um, please take a minute, introduce yourself and, um, and uh, some of your perspective that you're planning on bringing to the session today. Sure. Um, you know, as Nate mentioned, uh, co-founder with him of, of My Tech Partners. I've been in the role as president and CEO for a little over 10 years here at My Tech. Um, and, um, you know, have done quite a bit around uh, how we plan around IT uh, as we've gone through some growth phases. Uh, I also have been able to get quite a bit of perspective uh, from our peers and uh, in the industry, uh, and also uh, some peers in my Vistage group uh, over the last year of, of how uh, they're going through their planning process uh, as well. Well, and of course, the hundreds of clients that we've worked with uh, over the, yeah. the couple of decades that we've been we've been doing my tech as well. So we'll, we'll both hopefully bring some of that perspective. So with that said, let's start with um, you know one of the problems we're trying to solve because I think that's actually uh, that last point, Leaf, about the, uh, our engagement with um, lots of different small businesses um, um, in Minnesota and Colorado. Um, we we've seen a couple things, and the two key problems that we see is you know, the, the comfort and the, the level of business people feeling like they can understand IT and have an effective, and not necessarily under a deep knowledge, um, but, but at least have an effective conversation, feel comfortable having the right conversations around IT. And then the flip side of that equation is IT people really understanding the business. I mean, their job is to help the business, that, to help IT align with the business, but if, if they don't understand it, it's, it's difficult for them to do their part. So how do we really get these two groups that don't always understand each other to be communicating uh, together. So I'll, I'll uh, cut off a few bullet points that are, uh, that are some points here, Leif, but um, please share a little bit about your perspective on, on this room. Yeah, it's um, see if I can be a little more succinct than I said it the first time uh, when we were, uh, before we had the hiccup there is, you know, I'll start with uh, really the, the lack of comfort, you know, is, you know, there, you, what I've seen and, and you know, I've talked through just even internally in our business is the, the pace at which uh, IT, IT is changing um, sometimes creates a gap and, and you know, it's, whether it's a fear or desire to keep it at a distance, sometimes it's just keeping up with it um, and understanding how to leverage those new technologies. And then also really seeing the shift or understanding how to shift the view of IT as a pure expense in the business uh, to how it is a strategic play in the business to help you grow, to help you, uh, uh, you know, uh, drive better performance in, in, in the business as well as is, is a, a big factor that I see um, in really understanding that, that transition from IT as an expense as to IT as an investment. No, that's a great point, Leif. I mean, in the end, uh, as, the, as the first and last bullet point, you know, kind of described is that, first of all, it's ultimately the business leadership's responsibility to make sure that the organization uh, can do what they're, you know, fulfill their goals and objectives and mission. Uh, and, you know, the reality is IT is a significant investment, but it's not as significant as the people in the organization. So to your point of being IT really is there to enable your most expensive investment, which is in your people, um, to be able to help them drive more bottom line results or you know fulfill your mission. Um, so that's a good segue. I really appreciate you talking about the lack of comfort because it, it's you know oftentimes as a as a leader you you feel like sometimes the perception is you feel like you have to be the one that knows everything in the room, and that's really not the case. And I know IT people feel the same when they have IT conversations. They're used to being the one that knows all the technology knowledge. But now they're being asked to go into a situation now where they're kind of expected to know the business knowledge, but that doesn't always translate. Um, so can you can you speak to this as, as, as 
Leaf, you're kind of a, a unique individual in that you are a very technical business leader. Um, so I think you can share some perspective here as well. Yeah, it, it, even even as a you know a, a technical leader, as you know as my role has changed in the organization, um, I really needed to spend a lot of effort with the IT staff. Um, you know, making sure that they knew the the objectives that we we're trying to achieve on a you know monthly, quarterly, annual um, in three to five years out. Uh, uh, because that that perspective actually changes uh some the outcomes significantly almost all of the time uh you know from planning what you're going to be doing uh uh from uh you know whether it might be an application that you're going to be using down the road or a a solution you're going to be bringing to market all seems to tie back and if we're you know and i I've made a lot of mistakes over the years of just letting them have you know, a one-year vision as instead of a three-year vision, and had I given them enough information of what I was thinking two, three, four years out, um, it really changed the dialogue uh, with them. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think, uh, you know, definitely, you know, the further out in time uh, you look, the fuzzier a crystal ball gets, as I like to say, but uh, I've heard people say before, um, but yeah, the, like knowing that um, you, there's all different ways in which you can solve problems with technology, but if you don't know where you're going, it's really hard to um, do your best job of aligning that and making the right investments or changes now um, that might have a, you know, because typically on a technology perspective, you have a horizon of a three to five years, and so you, you, you need to think uh, at least that far out into the future. Um, so uh, very good. So again, so part of the problem we're trying to solve is you see the gap that exists here between the business people and the IT people uh, being able to communicate effectively. And so um, we actually uh, spent a lot of time this year putting together um, what we now have called it's a framework to basically build that bridge between um, the business side of the organization and the IT side um, that we're calling, uh, and we kind of broke it down into to four quadrants. Um, to hopefully categorize it and, and, and be able to walk through it more succinctly um, so we can do some strategic business IT planning. Um, and one of the things we're calling is, is saying, look, annually, it's called the, the define the target session. Like we need to know what target, where are you trying to hit? What goal are you trying to hit uh, in order for us uh, to be able to, um, you know, to hit it? Um, we've definitely, and Leif, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a heads up that I want to ask you, like if you can share any anecdotal uh, components around this, but uh, I'll start with one just to kind of uh, to get, uh, give you a moment to think. Is that you know we have actually had IT people come to us before, so they're you know they're typically report to a CFO or an executive in the organization. Uh, and the larger the organization gets, the more likely they are to have internal IT people. But um, uh, we've actually had IT people come to us and say we were told um, to put together a budget for next year, and then. And then we started asking, so sure, we can help you with that, but we started asking questions, well, what are the goals? What is, what is your organization trying to accomplish? And they had no idea whatsoever, not a single clue of, of really the goals and the expectations of what they were going to be able to do. So if they could put together a budget. It's not about that. It's just what's the likelihood of them being able to actually being, you know, have the business have the right expectations. And so if a business has expectation A and budget B and they don't align, well, now you've got an executive that's on the hook for, for not hitting goals and you've got an IT team that's really, the people that are really frustrated with IT because they didn't put a plan together that was going to hit the goals because they didn't know what they were. So that, that's what we're hoping to do is say, what's the target? And that way we can get that bullseye and throw that dart right in the middle. So Leif, any other anecdotal thoughts or stories to share along those lines? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, at, at a high level, we've, we've struggled with that over the years and, and, and have had discussions like, are you putting a budget to, to hold the status quo? Um, uh, because a lot of the IT staff will just say, I know how to do that. But usually, like to your point, there's the absence of where, where the strategic direction is. And if, <laughs> if you know, if they're putting together a budget that just says, yeah, we're going to do what we did last year. It all all factors being the same, which is usually not the case in every business, um, that budget is going to be hopefully in the wrong place uh, when it actually comes to execute the business plan. Yeah, and even another a more more maybe concrete example, and we've run across this before with one of our clients where uh, the the CEO of the organization um, had a uh, an outage had a problem with their personal laptop. Not their, it was a business laptop, but it was, they, they, it was their laptop they were using, and it was on a Saturday morning. 
And so, and they actually tried to call IT or, or source IT and they didn't get it. The CEO didn't get a response. And because, and there was actually no definition in this organization of is the, are the IT people supposed to work 24 seven or do I have a 24 seven support? Am I supposed to do something different? They had not defined that. So that's just a concrete example of where the business need and or the expectation of the business uh, wasn't necessarily defined or aligned with what IT's expectations are. Because if the expectation is 24 seven support, well, that might have a different cost to the business um, than if it's just an eight to five Monday through Friday uh, expectation. Um, and then of course, all the other decisions you might have to make relative to business and IT working together. That's just one uh, concrete example that we've seen uh, actually play out in one of our clients. Okay, well, with that said, um, I, I'd like to, like to like, before we go into the actual four quadrants, um, uh, we, we kind of define like, okay, well, what are we going to get out of this? Like, what, what's the value of, we, we define a problem, and okay, we can have a define the target session, but what, what, what should I expect to get out of a going through a session like this? And what should I drive toward if I'm leading this in my own organization um, or facilitating it with, you know, an organization like MyTech as a third party coming in to help? Um, so first and foremost, and, and by all means, Lee, I'll pause after each bullet and, and see if you have any thoughts um, to share. Um, but first and foremost, really help um, the business and IT stakeholders, not necessarily IT people, IT stakeholders, increase awareness and perspective around um, the problems and the goals, problems they're trying to solve and the goals they're trying to achieve. Any thoughts there, Leif? No, I, um, I, I think that's pretty self-evident on, it, on its face. It's just what, what mechanisms have you put in place to, to accomplish that? And, you know, whether it's a management uh, 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 a management system like EOS or Gazelles or Stratop or however you're doing that, you got to get in front of those stakeholders to give them the awareness. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, and, and uh, that's another item that actually is covered in the in the in the uh, in one of the quadrants. Actually, is like what business operating system do you run? Not what technical operating system do you run? What business operating system do you run? Um, so I hit a couple more of these. So. Uh, also define your organizational why associated with the goals, right? It's important to, if you have a goal, what's the objective? How does it, how does it align with the mission? How does it align with the, the strategy of the organization? Um, the better um, the people on your team or third party vendors or partners like, uh, like my tech are able to understand that, the better they're going to be able to help do their part in helping your organization fulfill those whys. Um, the other piece around uh, facilitating this conversation is that, um, Every organization has finite resources. Um, so when you say identify and prioritize opportunities, support goals, you're, you're not able to solve all problems all at the same time. So um, hopefully this process can help you, uh, this, this, this method that we've put together uh, is a way for you to help not only see a lot of the, the opportunities or challenges that you may have, but help you identify and prioritize which ones make the most sense and where you're gonna get the biggest return on your investment in the short term. Um, and finally, um, yeah, basically where you're able to chart, because you can organize those and see those opportunities, you can then chart a priorities list of action items going into the next year, you know, to set you up for success, success long term. Um, any final overall thoughts on, on, on that point, Leif? Here, no, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm just kind of chuckling to myself here from the perspective of, you know, you and I have in the leadership team has talked about, you know, we all like we we don't we if we were to stay at work till every problem was solved and all our goals were met, we we never go home, right? And that prioritization and understanding what's most important, um, whether it's in the business or in the business relative to IT, is is you know the the real <laughs> the real hard part that we all have to solve and keep everybody in alignment on and and that prioritization of what's the most important and get to get the best results um if we can communicate that to our staff and to our vendors i think that's when we win yeah and that's, that's i think sometimes a frustrating realization because it it, it, it it what that means is that you have problems that you're deliberately choosing not to solve because they're just not the most important ones to solve at the time. Um, and so sometimes, and I know we don't always do a good job of communicating that with our team so that they, 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 they've reported or they've expressed uh, frustration that there's a problem or a challenge or something you want to solve, but we haven't necessarily done a good job of saying, and we need to do better of saying, okay, we heard you, that's on the roadmap, but it's just, we, that we can't solve all problems at the same time and that's just not the top one at the moment. Uh, or, or is it the top one at the moment we're actively working on? So anyway, the goal is to be able to help 
your organization, uh, whether it be inter independently amongst yourselves or uh, co collaborating with a uh, third party uh, a technology partner like MyTech um, to be able to achieve these objectives so that year over year you can make incremental progress towards your goals. Okay, with that said, let's, let's dig into the four quadrants. So um, the, the first one um, that we, um, and we, we try to put them, you don't necessarily have to do all these in this order, but we, we feel that this is a natural order uh, of operations as far as how to work through the different, the, the, the four quadrants. Um, so um, first and foremost, what is, if you were to at a high level describe, well, what is your business like? What are the financial characteristics and perspectives um, that you have? Um, because this typically is a, the, the first guiding component to, uh, to an organization. So, um, you know, and, and this is what kind of defines the bumpers, if you will. Um, I, I actually heard a colleague um, recently describe it as, as these are the banks of your river. Like your river is going to ebb and flow, but you got to stay within your bank, uh, with the river banks. And so these are some of those things. So I don't know, Leif, can you talk about how you've seen um, some of these bullets, or these, these items here um, impact uh, or, or describe maybe some things about my tech in this regard? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, 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 yeah, the thing that's bouncing around my head and, you know, just to keep it in the frame, the, the, the framework of IT planning, this is like, this is the thing that we've learned that actually allows us to have uh, a much tighter uh, view when we actually get to the IT planning. If they, if everybody that is in in the process understands this, like you said, this is the bumpers or this is the banks. If they didn't, if if they didn't have this information, like you even take capex versus opex. I know in our business that has drastically shifted in the last three or four years. And had I not brought the team in um, and helped them through the my my thinking of why we're going from a capex model to an opex model, it's a it was a transition that happened in my mind as a business leader. But then I had to make that transition in their mind as the IT leaders so that then they started to think in that same mode. And it's, it's with every single bullet point here, it, that's what it drives to is, is you're getting them to have the same mind share early so that the IT planning, the, the actual tactical part of the IT planning goes smoother and you're not, you're not backtracking uh, at that time. So it, it, it's all about alignment. Yeah, and I think there's a couple things that I'll just because um, uh, a couple of these I think are relatively self-explanatory, but a couple of them I, uh, uh, I think are warrant some uh, some uh, elaboration. So let's talk culture, for example. I mean, culture could mean a number of things, and and we do mean culture in the sense that you know. Um, is culture one of the things you're investing in? Having a good culture helps with retention. Having a good culture, you know, um, you know, maybe increase the enjoyment that your staff have working in your organization. But this also relates to, well, what's the culture around IT? Um, are your staff, we, we've had, a, I've asked this question to people before, and they say, well, we've got kind of two um, camps in our organization. We've got the folks that really resist um, change in technology, and we've got the other folks that really want to drive change and use technology. Um, and that crosses age ranges, it crosses gender ranges, it crosses all of the above. Um, but what is your culture like? Um, because if you're trying to impact change relative to technology inside of your organization, understanding the culture can help you impact that change better. Uh, or at least think through what you're going to have to do to impact that change better. So, so that's one of the things we mean uh, with saying culture is just one word relative to business and IT planning is that does impact how you think through not just what you're trying to do, but then how you're actually going to get it, uh, uh, drive the adoption with your team. Um, the, the other one uh, is the investment perspective. Um, uh, one of the things that, what I mean by that and what, we, what we've seen by that is, is what, what we've seen is kind of two different, um, there's, there's lots of them out there, different kind of personas, if you will, or, or philosophies or investment perspectives, meaning that are, how do you view IT? Um, and Leif, you kind of alluded to this in, in the beginning, which is do you view IT as a cost or do you view it as a strategic advantage? And inside of the kind of the strategic advantage, um, it, there's, there, we see two two sides. One uh, organization that may say, I am intentionally going to invest and I want to try and find how IT can enhance the productivity uh, so I can outpace my competitors. So I'm intentionally, strategically trying to invest in IT to, to just get the most productivity out of my team because that's 
how I, I feel I can get an edge on my, on my competition and win in my marketplace, whether, you know, for-profit or non-profit. But then there's the other side of that camp. They still value IT in its role, but they're more on the, on the side of saying, I just don't want it to break. I want my team to be able to, to work. I want them to be productive, but I just, I really want to make sure that we don't suffer any outages or failures. So there's, there's a little bit, there is a difference there, right? So if you, if, if you were coming to, to my tech with, those different personas, we would make different recommendations depending on kind of, you know, which side of that line you, you may sit relative to what you're trying to accomplish with IT. Um, so that's what we mean by investment perspectives. And, um, uh, and so I, I just wanted to elaborate on those couple of things. Otherwise, some of those are, are more um, self-explanatory. So Leif, any, any final comments before we move on to the next slide? No, that sounds good. I think, I think you did a great job of that perspective on investment. All right, very good. And, and of course, the last bullet there is, Leif had already mentioned, like, what's your business operating system? Because sometimes that alludes to the rhythm and the way in which we can, can work together with you as well. Um, so, uh, all right. So moving on to the next one. So now that we've started um, with uh, the kind of the characteristics, let, let's talk about the framework of your organization. Let's, let's see, what, what are the bumpers? Now we say, okay, well, those are the bumpers. Now what are we trying to do in the next one to three years? Um, get a little bit more concrete. Uh, as far as, you know, the specific things we're trying to accomplish. So, Leif, can you talk a little bit about this and, and how it relates, how the two quadrants relate together? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, 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 it's interesting. I just had a discussion in our last Vistage group about this when, you know, the, the individual, specifically to growth plans, the individual is like, look, I, I'm not going to grow my business from my 30 employees to 80 to 100 or whatever. So, like, how does growth really even matter to me when I'm I'm planning and and I think I think you know you know the conversation then centered around well growth isn't just necessarily growth in people it might be growth in productivity you might say well I want to do more with less it might even mean you shrink in people but you grow in impact and in in bottom line um, and so really understanding. Uh, you know, the the dynamic around growth and, and what are you going to do to go there? How are you going to move that forward, like you say? And then, and, and, and those are, those are the problems that you're going to solve around that. And how does the team, how, you know, the, like I said, the team might shrink, but you still might grow. So like, and, and technology today is, is in a, in a much better place than it was even 10, 10 years ago about um, how can I use technology to uh, to make smarter decisions to um, not necessarily grow headcount um, and people resources. If it, not saying that you don't you won't have to do that, but you could do that and in leveraging uh, technology decisions to to facilitate whatever your growth strategy is, whether it's people, markets, geography, or or just straight financial. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, some of the times if you if you take that to, you know, not only um, those are some anecdotal things around IT and how IT can enable those things, but also things like, well, what if you're adding a location? Um, you know, what if you're trying to go from, you know, like the last bullet talking about team role structure? Well, what if you're trying to say, well, I, I'm running into a limit of my office space and I need to be able to enable people to work from home, or I'm trying to put together a disaster or a business continuity plan where um, I, I want in case um there's a, you know, statistically speaking, there's water damage is what's going to cause you to not be able to access your space. So in case the fire sprinklers go off for some reason, or we get a flood in our building, and I, we still need to be able to serve our clients. Like sometimes those are the things that we're thinking about as well. Um, just that from a from a goals and initiatives of just trying to again, what's the next problem you're trying to solve to really make sure that your you know your business is achieving achieving its objectives. So again, you can go into a great level of depth here, but in general, I think people understand the idea that goals and initiatives and really trying to throw those out. Um, but be succinct about it and um, try and narrow down what can be done because um, that's a good start to say. And, and the other thing that's a good check-in because sometimes I think what people, and we've experienced this and we've seen it in our clients and we've seen it in our peers, um, is that these goals also need to be in alignment or they should be in alignment with um, the, the core strategy of the business, right? So it's not just about setting goals. It's about making sure they're in alignment with the long-term aspects. You know, the, the big, hairy, audacious goal, as Jim Collins would say, um, you know, for the organization. I, I, I think the the thing that we just to kind of kind of wrap that up, Nate. I think the thing that we we have experienced in our business, and I'm seeing it more and more 
in in our clients and, and businesses our size is that you know are they are taking a pause minimally at an annual basis but sometimes even at a quarterly basis to say are we working on the right things are we setting those goals are we setting the rocks are we measuring to that like you know i i have seen a significant shift in in small business that they are doing that and if you aren't in a rhythm of that i guarantee the leader in your market or the leader in your in in your space is and that you should be doing that because it does give a lot of clarity uh, well, at least that's a great that's a great point one of the things that i remember uh you know 10 15 years ago when we started this conversation um around it maturity um is that you know the bar uh 15 years ago uh, you had an edge on your competition if you had a high-speed internet connection and a, and a domain, you know, and a name-based domain name as opposed to AOL or Yahoo. Um, that bar is no longer there. That bar is way higher. Uh, to your point, is it's there, the, you know the businesses that we're seeing really uh, be successful and achieve their goals, whether those, whatever those goals are, um, are actively working to engage both sides of the business from a business and IT perspective uh, to make strategic, intentional investments and moves forward. Uh, so that's a, that's a, that's a great point that that's we are seeing that as an industry um, happening and which is one of the reasons why this is you know important is because we're realizing that this is still a gap that does exist and if, if this is a way we can help facilitate and, and uh, that gap um, then then again we can all win so um, all right so the next one gets a little bit deeper and I don't want to go I don't want to go uh, since too much time on it because you can spend a lot of time on each one of these quadrants but um, is really taking a look at your business risk profile now some of this is a risk based on the industry you are in, because sometimes that dictates uh, some of the things you have to do, uh, like from a compliance perspective, for example, if you're in a regulated industry. Um, but the other part is, well, what's, because each each person, uh, each organization has their own uh, risk tolerance. Uh, so there's so there's different perspectives that are there um, that, that we need to make sure that we understand. Uh, otherwise, we could we could we could you know what we IT wise, if we're, whether it be not a partner like MyTech or an internal resource, um, might not be able to make the right recommendations to align with your personal or your business risk profile. So, Leif, can you talk a little bit about this and how you view this or what you've seen in our clients? Yeah, it, um, you know, I, yeah, of these four points, I think that the, the most consistent one over the years has been around disaster recovery and business continuity. Uh, it has changed some, but it, it has been relatively consistent. I think that the other three are the ones that seem to be, a, to me, a more of a moving target. Um, you know, uh, you know, I would say life cycle management um, uh, has it shifted. Uh, we can typically get more out of the technology, more life out of the technology than we did in past years. It's become more stable, um, and so you know. You, if you haven't reviewed that and in in you're thinking around that and or haven't talked to us or talked to you know an IT leader, you should because that the ground has shifted there significantly in the last three to five years. But more significant change has happened in the security and compliance side um, with things becoming, you know, going more to online or cloud, however you want to say this, it has opened up a whole new realm of security concerns. Um, the sophistication behind uh, what's out there has, has changed on both sides of protecting and exploiting. And then uh, you know, also the, the, the platform or the, the ground uh, work has also changed around compliance. There's way more um, regulatory uh, requirements in protecting data because there's, there's so much more shifted uh, that's accessible out there. So security and compliance, um, you know, is is at a much more rapid pace than any of the other ones here in 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 the technology. Um, and you know, so you know, re review your strategy around lifecycle management if you haven't uh, if you haven't looked at that in the last three years. You, you probably will see that um, there's significant change, and you can make some business decisions based on that. But security and compliance. Um, we're all struggling to stay in front of that. Um, it's it's a race between the good guys and the bad guys at this point. Yeah, so true. Um, and I, on that front too, what we're seeing, Leaf, or at least what 
we're seeing in the industry, and this is just a minor, almost like a minor piece of trivia, is that you know those or, uh, organizations or industries that are regulated and are somewhat forced into a compliance um, uh, posture, um, they're 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 on the leading edge of it. However, you know we it, it, the industry is saying, and industry experts and security experts are saying that the same regulations and the same security footprint that people that are in a regulated industry or a compliance related industry have to do uh, will go down will carry across the industry into even unregulated or non-regulated industries uh, merely because that's what you're going to have to do in order to stay secure. Now that doesn't mean like today or tomorrow, just but that's kind of the direction that things are going. So that's that is a, that's a good point, Leif. Um, and the last thing that I guess I wanted to bring to this slide is, is, is really the pieces that aren't technical, um, because I, I want to make sure that this isn't just an IT planning part of risk. This is a business planning part of risk. And part of that is, for instance, you know, one of our uh, clients that we're working with when we talked had the security conversation, they mentioned that, well, physical security is really important for them. So they actually have cameras and they have uh, key fobs to access doors. They actually sometimes have armed guards that they have to go through. So that they have things that they have to do to make sure there's a, there's a physical security component to their business. Um, uh, that's not has, you know, the technology helps with some of that, but, but it's not a technical problem. Um, and the other part is around business continuity and disaster recovery is that the technology side of that is typically the easier part. What happens, I mean, we can, you know, if, if for instance, your, your infrastructure died or something had a problem where there was a fire or a flood in your building and your technology wasn't accessible, that's something that could be moved to the cloud relatively quickly. But how are you going to get back? Where are your people going to work? Is the plan to have them go to coffee shops? Is the plan to have them work from home? Do you have an, an agreement with a, an alternate facility, a community or a location where you can set up temporary office spaces and, and then allow people to work while, you, while your building uh, is unavailable? Um, so some of those challenges are less about technology problems because those are actually the easier conversations to have um, is, is figuring out the logistics of operationally, what are you going to do if something like that happened to you? Because um, it's a subset, it's a part of business continuity as well. So um, this is, so this isn't just about technology, but it is also trying to align what are they, how do you really maintain what's the, for your business and what the risk that your business has and the obligations you have to fulfill your clients to your, to your customers or clients, what do you need to be doing um, to, to stay in business? Yeah, there's. Yeah, I don't know if it's on the next slide. I think the other thing that um, has been significant part of discussions is also uh, the legal or insurance uh, risk profile that we're taking. Because as much as you know, we can try to put you know keep the good guys the, with the bad guys out. What happens? Because security isn't uh, isn't bulletproof. And so, what are you doing? also from a risk perspective to protect yourself on the insurance side too is another thing that would be top of mind when i would go, would go through this i don't know if that's further in your in your slide deck or not Nate. so yeah no I, it, it's it's not um, but it definitely would fall under this category is is you know so there's things to define what your risk profile is but then it's also what are you doing to mitigate that risk right and that has that has one of the ways is legal and one of the ways is, is with insurance so that's that's an excellent point um, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Um, okay, so um, this is the last quadrant, and this is the one where it, it's interesting. When I, if I look at the four quadrants, um, the first three are really about defining um, uh, the business, defining where you're trying to go, understanding where your risks are, and then the last part is say, how do you take all of that information and connect the dots to what you're doing operationally and where the problems exist operationally, and then helping uh, facilitate a conversation to, as we said, one of the objectives of or the outcomes of a session like this is to try and identify priorities uh, to, to start working on, um, uh, on on those steps. So, so operationally, um, this is where we start. Um, but it, but and and what you, what we've found every time we've walked through this with with one of our clients is we found that you start seeing as we identify opportunities or challenges or issues in this area, we're able to point to or connect the dot to something that applies to their goals or something that applies to their strategy or something that addresses one of their risk profile comments or, or, or positions. So it, that's really what this last session is. And, and like before I hand it over to you, Lisa, just, oh, which I do, we'll do in a second. That's if I were to sort of frame it in your mind in that way, like the first three sections are really kind of defining the way you feel the organization needs to operate and run and, and the goals and, 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 and the bumpers. 
um, and then we'll see and we'll help prioritize because we're able to identify these these areas here and then connect the dots to um, to initiatives, objectives, um, opportunities, long-term or short-term uh, goals. So, Leif, comments, uh, additional? Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I would probably just, you know, repeat what you're saying from a perspective of, like, you know, you set the goals, this is how, you know, how are you communicate th communicating with the, to the staff? How are you actually putting it into the business operation? And at the end of the day, what are you doing to measure that, you know, that you've achieved success? Um, and, you know, do you have the right people doing it? Do you have the right resources doing it? Are you driving out the redundancy? You know, that, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly what you said. It's taking all three of those first quadrants and making them come alive in the business um, and being able to loop back and say, did we achieve success? Did we meet that goal that we set? Um, do we have the right people doing it? Did they do it efficiently? And are we now operating as close to optimal that we can at this time? Yeah, thank you. And I think that, you know, this is also where you really get a better picture of, um, you know, the first three quadrants, it, you could almost be, it, it doesn't get into the detail of your business. It just gets into the detail of the aspects of your business. So this gets into, well, what departments have we chosen to have? What what applications are we have we chosen to use? What are the key processes that we've defined, right? What are the key performance indicators that we've chosen to use or that really help us understand what's going on? And so that's where, um, again, like I, like what you said, this is where you actually make it live in the organization, Leaf. I really like the way you describe that. Um, so, and, and, and I also like to reference in, in, in from a mindset perspective and as just to elaborate on the key performance indicators, it seems like an obvious choice and an obvious uh, thing because everybody has indicators that are that are uh, critical and KPIs or is a common business nomenclature. Uh, however, I, I like to reference Stephen Covey, which starts, you know, start with the end in mind uh, or begin with the end in mind. And really, in the end, the, the data um, that allows you to make good decisions or the data that, that lets you know whether or not you achieved your goal or fulfilled your mission, um, how do you know, how do you get it? How do you get that information? And at what frequency do you need that information? Is it is it something that you, you can look at it once a year and you're good? Is it something you need to look at it every day, every hour, once a week, once a month? Um, you know, what is what is the data you need to do in order to, to do your job and to make sure you can make intelligent decisions about the business? Because that information and understanding that and defining that with clarity will allow you to reverse engineer how do your applications work together? How do your departments work together? How do your processes work together? What integration do you need? How does your team work together? How does it impact your clients? You can reverse engineer throughout the entire operational part of the organization to give you the outcome that you need from a key performance indicator perspective. So I'll pause there and, and leave, uh, you know, if there's other comments you have on that, because it it, um, it plays into all the other variables and details. Yeah, I, I, the, the only thing that's just kind of top of mind as you talk through that, Nathan, too, is, is um, to make sure that the goals are achievable and it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about momentum over perfection as well. Um, and mm -hmm. you don't want to get into a plan, you know, planning things to, to a level of perfection, you got to plan them to a level of improvement, and that's also why KPIs are important. Is is you know it, it, your first iteration in your plan might move you you know 10% better or 20% better, but ultimately the goal is to be at 60 or 70% better. So um, you know we've we've gotten into the plan sometimes the trap of planning to perfection as opposed to planning for uh, momentum um, and, yeah. and, you know, it's, it's baby steps. It's, it's, it's little win over little win over little win because uh, you can plan yourself into, uh, into, into being stagnated or frozen in your own spot because the plan is too overwhelming. Yeah, Leif, that's a great point. I really appreciate you mentioning the baby steps because that, um, that is, I think there's, you know, if you haven't, I mean, uh, those are lessons that hopefully everyone eventually learns. And if you can avoid learning those because of mistakes and pain, uh, just from uh, from but listening to this and doing a better job of planning, then that definitely helps. And the other piece I'd like to relate, I think that's a good segue bullet point or, 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 or note relative to, you know, one of the things that we talk about, like, kind of what's when the rubber hits the road or when you actually get traction to, you know, to leverage a, an EOS phrase, um, is is like when you look at your applications and one of the questions i'd like to ask just to frame this around applications to say if for all those listening right now um ask yourself this question um what is the core what is the primary application you use 
to do your job. So just you've got, I'm sure you all have that in mind. Then the next question I'd like to ask you is like, of the capabilities of that of that tool, that application, um, is that which so that there's 100% of the capabilities. How much of that capability do you feel you are using in your organization today? Is that 10%, 15%? 70%, what, what's the percentage? And it doesn't have to be exact, just kind of an arbitrary anecdotal gut feel of what percentage you feel you're using. Um, so pick that number in your head. Um, and then the question I would ask you is, well, if it's rare that one application would ever be your organization or your department would fit an application to 100% effectiveness. So what's the maximum utilization that, that you might be able to have? So let's say if you picked 30% is what I'm currently using, I actually think I'd only ever get 60% out of this application. Okay, great. So now we have a gap. So think about that number, the maximum utilization. And so now you can have a gap between what, what am I actually using and what is my maximum opportunity for this. Um, and by the way, I'm sure that your software provider uh, is not letting you only pay 30% of their bill if you're only using 30% of the capability. So the more you can you know, achieve your maximum, the better you're going to be able to get return on investment, right? But to go, then bring full circle back to Leaf's point is that from a technology perspective, um, very often you can make the checkboxes and you can you can create the change to go from 30 to 60% maybe in one giant leap, but it's highly unlikely that your people are going to be able to make that change in one giant leap. You're going to have to make more baby step and incremental approaches. This also plays into the culture conversation we had earlier about what's the culture around IT for your organization. Do people like and want change or do they, they, they struggle with it? The more that they struggle with it, the more that they, they kind of put, shy away from it a bit, the more you're going to have to probably go slow uh, in these phases uh, to, to accomplish those objectives. So that's just one example of where you take some of the business operations, you take some of the, the planning and understanding of your organization and tie it to baby step incremental actions you can take in order to, uh, to have a, you know, impact on your organization, you know, iteratively and incrementally over time. All right. So, I need another, another thought that I, I would add there too is that, and we've learned in this lesson and, and seen other people kind of struggle through this as well, is um, you have to be careful that the work that you're doing does not become the change itself and only itself. Ultimately, the work is serving your client and providing your service or your product. And like you, with, with not thinking through and not making sure that you're doing it in baby steps, the work be, could, can become the change itself, which is, is not where you want to be either. Um, and, and so that's, so that's why you, you planning, going through a planning process, you make sure that you're you're keeping the eye on the ultimate uh, golden egg, which is the thing that generates the revenue and, and sustains the business as opposed to change itself. Yeah, thank you, Leif. And I would say that you know the key, the the other thing that's important to note is I'm going to wrap up this 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 part of the the presentation, and we're going to close out here in a moment. Is that it's really rare that one person in the organization is going to have all this information, right? Um, and chances are it's going to be more than two people. It's probably going to be multiple people who either, and this is why you, you look at this section here, you got, what are the different departments? Well, you have department heads or you have team leads. Um, you know, what are the different, inter well, you've got your clients. I mean, you have to serve your clients or your customers. Um, you know, you might have cross-functional teams are involved. You might have different application experts in your organization. So, like, at, at some point, bringing all these, again, business and IT stakeholders together um, to help uh, make sure that the, the change is actually having the impact that you hope it will, as opposed to being the change for the sake of change, as, as Leap was kind of alluding to. So um, so that's um, that, that's pretty much perhaps it up for that, as far as our four quadrants of strategic business and IT planning. Um, I uh, do want to, to note that um, there's a couple things that we have that I'd like to remind everyone. Um, with We didn't have it planned in December, but we had such a demand. We actually created another event in December for in Minnesota to do a Microsoft immersion experience. Um, if you haven't come to one of those, they're excellent. Um, they do a great job of uh, creating awareness around your Office 365 portfolio if you're using that. Uh, we also have one in Colorado in January. We added that just recently as well. Uh, and finally, one of the things that we talked about in the beginning of this conversation is the, you know, is the CapEx, OpEx conversation about, well, what, how do you make these IT investments? And there's, so there's different tax implications and tax tips and tax planning components relative to that. Um, so, so we actually have a CPA uh, expert, a tax expert coming in uh, to, for next month's MyTechU to talk about tax tips to help plan your IT investments so that you're factoring in 
uh, tax ramifications for IT investments that you're making. So um, stay tuned for that if you're interested. I know that's not the, the, the most exciting topic talking about taxes, but it's something that is, is, is applicable to, to pretty much all of us. So, um, uh, so join if that, if that uh, can be a benefit. So I guess I wanted to say, uh, signing off here, thank you. We would love to have the opportunity to uh, go through a define the target session with you and uh, get a better understanding of, you know, kind of the four quadrants that'll help us uh, work together from a strategic business IT planning uh, perspective. So Leif, any final thoughts before we sign off? Nope, thank you for attending, um, great job. Yeah, and thank you for your patience. I know we ran over because of the uh, audio issues uh, before, but uh, thank you all everyone and you will receive a, an email um, tomorrow with follow-up as well as uh, a link to the recording. So make it a great day and uh, we'll see you next month.